Hey everybody, you're very welcome back to a Skogok Mark for this, the 3 in 1 tripod video. I'm Joe Price and behind the camera as always is Ida Olsen. Hello everyone, I just wanted to say real quick thank you so much for the support on our last videos. Uh, we really enjoy making them, I love to edit these videos and you know put them out there for you. And yeah, that was that, let's head into the video. <laughs> so back to answering the questions of why there's a load of sticks in the forest behind me. No, it's not trying to recreate something from Blair Witch, but in this video I thought I would show the three tripods that I use the most and the various situations in, in which I may find those tripod uses. Behind me we have the tall sticks here, and the tall sticks require a bit more work, and this is going to be a bit more of the standard camp culture kind of tripod that you would see with lashings and frappings, and I'll take you through all of them. These smaller sticks here behind me are going to be a more on-the-fly, in the woods with your haversack using a small bit of cordage from your pocket type thing just for maybe getting your kettle up or off the ground and then these gnarly boys over here are what it's going to be is if you you have no saw you have no uh, string with you you have no cordage with you and you just want to put together a tripod again just so you can do some cooking or get some stuff up over the fire so we'll have your standard one we'll have kind of something in the middle for the for people just out and about in the woods and then we'll have one just put together by, by sheer hands. So let's get into it. But before we get into it, just getting ahead of myself there, there's one knot that you need for everything that you kind of lash and frap in the woods. And that's whether it's a diagonal lash or it's a square lashing, but you want to have a thing called a clove hitch. It's probably one of the most useful knots in the woods. And I'm gonna show you that really quickly before we start, because that's gonna be your base, base, base for all lashings that you accomplish in the future. Okay. So the clove hitch, our base knot for all our lashings and frappings to begin with, is you simply take your, your piece of string, leave yourself a good, good bit of tail here, place it over your stick, come around, create an X. Come around one more time, you can see my X is created there. Come around one more time and put it up through the middle of that X. Like so. You should be able to pull it all down and get it tight. Remember, we don't want to rush dress our knots. Now to add a bit of security, we can put a stop knot in this end here, or if we leave a long enough tail, we can wind it in and make it part of our lashings. But that quite simply is our clove hitch. Okay, so we've just stepped out of the classroom over there and I'm just gonna sit down here and make this. So first of all, when you're selecting these tripods, this is gonna be your bigger tripod, something that you would set up a bit more permanently at a camp to be a bit more aesthetic, maybe on a multi-overnighter um, to have a boat place to be a bit more solid and a bit more tall. First of all, when you're cutting your sticks, always try and keep everything bigger than your thumb. You can see here that at the thinnest point, my sticks are about the size of my thumb. When you're making a, a tripod to support kind of 10 litre loads, 6 litre loads, those big kind of Petromax kind of pots, you always want the tripod to be at least as tall as yourself. So when you go to cut your sticks or gather your sticks, allow another 30 centimetres on your height, 12 inches for those who use freedom measurements, but allow another 30 centimetres on because as you splay the legs and it all settles together, you're going to lose that height. So if you cut your sticks at the start, which is a mistake I used to make and is a very common mistake, but if you cut your sticks at eye level, when you kick your tripod out, they're going to be down at chest level. So always just something to remember when working with any tripod. Next of all, you want to work smart, not hard. So rather than trying to hold the sticks up and lash them all together while they're standing or you know, incorporating friends in to get it, simply find a, a downed log or you can place a log on the ground and this gives you elevation to work with your lashings and your frappings. Try and keep the sticks as close as possible, but I like to keep about a finger's length in between the two and again just gives me space to work. Keep 30 centimeters up above where you're going to start your lashing. Don't start your lashing at the top, it gives it space to slide up. You start your lashing down too far and you're going to end up with what you kind of commonly see in a TP where the lashing will be down here and you'll have huge protruding sticks. So about 30 centimeters from the top and that is where we are going to start our lashing. So we have our clove hitch in here and the thing about the clove hitch is it works on one direction of tension. You can add a stop knot in here and that's totally fine. You can turn your clove hitch around and have your tail coming off that way and pull it in that way. Again, totally fine. But just because it has ended up in this direction, this is how I like to do it. So you can see here, if I was to start my frapping this way, you would pull the clove hitch and you'd pull it out. 
So now that the clove hitch is in, I just come round the back of my clove hitch, which adds to that tension, come up top, and then I wrap my tail around here, which acts almost like a timber hitch, but just gives it a bit more friction for when you start to, to come together. And then that way, your clove hitch is perfectly secure. Then, with my finger spacing, and this is gonna be all fingers and thumbs for a while while things are just in, I bite it down and I come around. And you want to kind of work underneath your, your knot. These are my lashings. These are the lashings that are gonna go. And you don't have to be super tight with these at the start. You're just trying to keep them neat, keep them safe, and you'll see why in a minute. So I like to come around there about six times. The rules um, in regards to lashings and frappings is for all the lashings that you put on, so there's going to be six on here, well then you have three lashings inside. So if you had four here, you put two on the inside and so on. And you can see now, because I'm up off the ground and I have this beautiful space to work in, I'm not fingers and thumbs and, and struggling about. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So now I'm gonna start my frappings. And like we said, three. So I come through the middle here and I can get my frapping stick or my tent peg, which you can see from another video. And coming through here one more time, like so. And then coming up here, gives me one complete frapping. And I can pull that really, really tight. And this is what brings your tripod together. You can see now, I'm also incorporating that clove hitch from the start into my frapping, making sure that it's double tight. And we can go around here again. One complete loop. Pull it tight. One more complete loop. And pull it tight. Ah, there we go. Now as you can see, things are starting to bite down and that's why you, you get all fingers and thumbs. And because I'm up off the ground here now, I'm gonna to have to manipulate the sticks to be where I need them to be. So I've manipulated this crossways, which now gives me a section to work through there. So again, repeating the process of our lashings. Once around, frapping stick. Pull tight. Once around. Frapping stick. Pull tight. And once more around. Frapping stick. And pull tight. Now we can finish off again with another clove hitch, should you wish. We get some manipulating going on here. And we're finishing up with a clove hitch this time on the bottom. You don't want to finish up with a clove hitch up around the top. So making our X. Going through our X. And remember, not pulling our knots, not being crazy with them, not trying to struggle down with them. Get them going. And there we go. We can add a stop knot there really quick. Should we feel for it? Give ourselves some extra security. We can remove that. And there we have our complete tripod lashing. And all that's left to do is to stand it up. So there you go, folks. Hopefully there's some things in there that everybody can take away from. Even just the clove hitch, the simple incorporating the tail of the clove hitch into your lashing is fantastic. But always remember to start with your clove hitch at the top, work your lashing down underneath it, and finish at the bottom. And then it's just a quick setup. When you get to camp, stretching your legs out, pulling your middle leg out, and getting it set down in the snow. There we go. And this is what you could see that I said about at the start. These sticks were 30 centimeters above my head, and then depending on the ground and the conditions underfoot that I have, they finished a lot lower than what I expected, but still a nice height. Let's go around and get this guy in the snow here. That is us good to go. 
So that is the stereotypical big tripod for a round camp, something aesthetic, something a bit more permanent, something solid. So now we look at something to make really quickly, should it just be you on a day hike. So here we are, back at the back at base camp with our tripods and you can see that our bigger, more permanent structure one is up behind us. Behind me here now, we're going to use our other thumb size sticks, always very important and these are good solid sticks. We're going to use these, or I'm going to use these, to show you another quick tripod to make just around camp or if you want something to build over an elevated fireplace or you can make these as tall and as small as you wish but I like to use these on the kind of more smaller ones and all you need for this don't even need your frapping stick you just need a hank of cordage roughly about two meters long and you can set one of these up lickety split so here we are with the little kind of woodsman's wind last tripod you can see I got my claw fitch on top just like in the next one again a very important knot with the stop knot going this way which means that I've got my tension on my lashing going this way. But the cool thing with the wind last tripod is that it's super fast and just something super quick to do. With your two meter cord, you can see I got a big tail here, but I've got my lashings. I've still got my six lashings and my finger space between my six, or between my sticks. I got my fingers <laughs> on my six, but between my sticks. <laughs> and all you simply gotta do is take this middle stick up and over the top. And this middle stick acts like a windlass, like when you're biting down on a tourniquet and acts like a temporary or kind of a faux uh, frapping, if you will. So I'll just turn it to the side there so you can see. And again, I got my tail off here on the side. You in focus, my dear? No, oh, yeah. No problem. <laughs> I got this. She's got this. The stick, as you can see, comes over the top and starts to bite down. And this is why you need it. You don't want rotten sticks for this. You don't want dead sticks for this. You can hit yourself in the groin like I just did. And you can grab it and you can turn. Oop. There we go. You can see that she's starting to bite down there. Bite down. And she's good. And you just gotta put it in the ground like you would a regular tripod. And that's you set up and perfectly ready to go. And then you can just simply take your remaining tail, wrap it up over the top really quick and the reason why I leave this tail out is because you get yourself a beautiful place to hang your pots from should you wish to so there you go that is the windless woodsman less pretty but super fast super quick and as you can see super strong and you can hang any pot you want from that so that is our second tripod less cordage less complicated but faster so here we are you can see we got again our tripod collection is building up our big structural one our small little woodsman's windlass what happens if you haven't got tools to cut or string with you or you just want to put up something even quicker and a bit more kind of primitive and on the fly well that's where choosing these forked branches comes into play now unlike other tripods you're going to need two sticks the same size and one stick a little bit longer and remembering like we said from the previous tripods that when you start at this height, you know they're going to be a little lower, but at least with this one we don't have to worry about our clove hitches or cordage. But what you do have to have is forks. Good, strong, sturdy forks. And this is spruce. Most people would be in amongst spruce forests or pine forests. When you have trees like alder and birch, they have natural forks that appear off them. But with spruce you don't. You get these gnarly kind of Sauron's crown type of affairs. But basically all you can do, or all you have to do, is cut the branches and turn them upside down and you can still get yourself some very sturdy forks. But the important thing to remember is two sticks one height, one stick the bigger height, and then you'll be able to try yourself a getter, a tripod really quickly too. So we're down here and we have picked out a fireplace and we're going to make our natural forked tripod. And this is probably the quickest one out of all of them but you need to kind of be a bit more precise on how you kind of put it together and the woods you choose. You don't want these to be snapping and falling apart. So when your two sticks are the same size, you want to take your two same size sticks and put the forks together so that they catch each other. And you can get an awful lot of friction in this, especially if you've chosen the right ones. So very simply, you can see that these have caught each other. Now normally with a tripod, when they're all the same length, the lashing is what holds it in place. But because these are only forks, you have to counteract this movement. The sideways movement isn't going to happen but you have to counteract this forward and back. And that's where your longer stick comes into play because you can make this a bit more taller if you wanted to at your camp, but then you take your other stick, your longer stick, and what you do is you can catch 
those two forks together, put it in the ground at the length you want, make sure it's all tucked in nicely, and there you go, you got your forked tripod. And you can use some spruce roots, a more natural material, you can just take a crooked branch and hang it over the top, but that's a good solid tripod to get you out of a situation should you want it to hang something over a fire. Looks a bit more bushcraft, a bit more aesthetic, wouldn't be as super strong as the lashed ones would be, but definitely something that's a bit nice and you can put together super quickly should you not want to waste any resources with lashings and frappings and also a very easy one to take down, discard in the woods and leave no trace. So there you go, three tripods, all in various states, all of the different trees, but something that you can use in all situations in the woods should you want to do some cooking outside. Thank you very much for joining myself and the lovely Ida on this video. Thanks you for the support and if you would like to support us more please leave a like or a comment on future videos that you would like to see and subscribe. And until next time, peace.